Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Nap Othwell. I'm the pastor here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Slater, Iowa, and you're watching our Sunday morning live stream on this Palm Sunday, 2021. That's been ringing the church bell. Thank you, William, for your prelude. Andy again is on sound this morning, and Jess is moderating for us. Welcome all. We have a few folks in the sanctuary this morning. That is a welcome sight. And again, as I explained earlier to this group, these are our early steps back. And so uh, we are slowly returning to in-person gathering as we are mindful of all of those gathering now with us uh, in the sanctuary by way of your own devices. Our altar flowers are given this morning to the glory of God by Doug and Brenda in celebration of their the wedding anniversaries of Eric and Mandy and Joe and Mary. Thank you, Doug and Brenda, for these flowers and congratulations to all. A special word of welcome uh, again to all of you who are here and thank you for registering online. That is a step that is necessary in this first phase of our back to church plan. Today is Palm Sunday, which means next week is Easter Sunday. We expect a few more folks in person next week. If you would like to be here in person, there is a form on Bethlehem's website, slaterblc.org. And in completing that form, we're able to know how many to expect. And again, in this first phase of Back to Church, we are keeping the occupancy low at 40. Uh, that form helps provide a process for distancing and for follow-up should that be necessary at some point. But again, thank you for your patience, everyone, as we navigate this return to normal life here at Bethlehem. Happy birthday today to our friends Aubrey and Joyce. Happy birthday, you two, and happy birthday this week to a whole lot of folks, among them Al and Tim, Wyatt, Wendell, Ashley, Tabitha, and Jen. Congratulations to all your friends of Bethlehem are remembering you this morning. Welcome Rich and Janet. Welcome Howard and Marcia. Hello Dennis and Joe, and Mike and Marlene and Max and Elaine, Norma and Oren and Doug and Brenda. Good morning, Barb and Jim, Kim and Steve and Mike and Julie and Joyce and Lori. Good morning, everyone. Our service begins this morning with a word of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are beggars, this is true. Those are Luther's last words. We hunger for a word of grace. We thirst for reconciliation and peace. Luther understood well his own captivity to sin. And here in worship, one of the first things we do is turn. We turn from ourselves and we turn toward the grace that only God can give. We confess all that we've done and failed to do and we ask God for the things that only God can give, grace and peace, wholeness and life. Church, if you know these words. I invite you to say them with me. Gracious God, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Well, our readings for this week are from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, Psalm 31, and Philippians 2. Those readings are listed in this week's bulletin, which we email out each Friday. Today's gospel reading is from the gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter. Thank you, Bob and Ann, for your reading this morning. The Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find it tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Holy Week, Holy Week begins with a parade. And not one, but, but two parades, actually. Two parades are underway as Jesus enters Jerusalem. You have Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem with the shouts of Hosanna, the cries for help. Save us now, the people are crying. And on the other end of town, Pilate is making his way into the city. If not at that same moment, shortly before or shortly thereafter, Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, is entering Jerusalem too. Why? He's not Jewish. But it was the Passover festival. It was a time of pilgrimage, a time of remembering Israel's unique history. The Israelites had been slaves in Egypt. But God sent a series of plagues. And in the last of those plagues, God passed over the Israelite houses. You remember that story. Several hundred thousand people make their way to Jerusalem to celebrate that history too even as Rome occupies all of Judea. Why is Pontius Pilate in town? Well, to make sure no one gets any ideas. And he would have brought an army with him. And he would have made quite a show of it all as he entered Jerusalem. Pilate is there to remind the Jewish people who calls the shots. He's there to keep the masses in line. Rome allows the celebration of Passover, so long as that celebration doesn't incite any new ideas related to actual liberation. Pilate comes in on a war horse. Jesus comes in on a rented mule. Hosanna, the crowd shout, save us now, they cry. Israel has been expecting new leadership. God saved them as an enslaved people once before. God will save them again. 
God delivered them from exile once before. God will deliver them again. The expectation is God will send a new king to Jerusalem, the holy city, the city of David. 500 years earlier, the Old Testament prophet Zechariah predicted as much. Reading from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those words are written 500 years before Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. So here you have Jesus of Nazareth, of the house of David, entering the holy city on a mule this morning. Ah, now maybe we're beginning to understand why everyone's so excited. Now maybe the picture gets clear. The people are desperate and hopeful. Their king has come, and so they lay down their coats and they lay down these branches. God is about to do a new thing in the life of God's people. Well, as we know now, God's answer in Jesus was a very different answer than anything the people could have imagined. They had imagined Pilate and his army being run out of town. They had imagined a commander. They had imagined peace won by way of a military victory. No different than God's parting of the Red Sea in the time of Moses. They'd imagine something dramatic, a clear confrontation, something definitive. And God's answer in Jesus is both of those things. And yet, simultaneously, what God does through a Roman cross doesn't look like a victory at all. A reign of peace, yes but in surrender. A reign of strength, yes, but in weakness. A reign of hope, but in suffering. A reign of life, but in death. Jesus fails to live into the people's expectation of what a Messiah might look like. And when he fails to be the king of their choosing, this crowd turns. Today they're good and they're joyful and there's a buzz in the air. And yet in less than a week, as Jesus remains obedient to God's will, as opposed to the will of anyone else or anything else, well, that's where the grumbling will begin and some disenchantment will set in. In less than a week, those who shouted, blessed is this one. They'll be the same people shouting, crucify him. Crucify this one. Free that one. Barabbas was being held because he physically opposed Roman occupation. He was one who was actively working against the presence of Rome. And so he'd been jailed. Crucify this one, free the other one. We set expectations all the time. It's our nature. It's not our first nature as children of God. It's our second nature, which is sin. We set expectations for ourselves. We set expectations in relation to others. When those expectations go unmet, well, the dissonance starts there, doesn't it? 
rather than consider our own position, our own assessment of reality, rather than look for God on the move in ways we might have never imagined. It's easier, it's tempting, almost second nature, to turn inward, to pronounce a word of judgment. There on the spot. We go down that rabbit hole regularly in our own nearsightedness and our own attempts at self-righteousness. And it leads to what? Well, it leads to all kinds of brokenness and suffering as we assume often the worst. Speaking from my own lived experience too, we imprison ourselves in our own preconceptions and our own improvised positions. Thank God this Jesus is a very different kind of king. All of those years ago, God didn't send the Son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God didn't unfollow or unfriend anyone 2,000 years ago. Instead, the word was made flesh and lived among us. God embraced humanity in Jesus Christ. In a place called Bethlehem, a child was born in the muck of our humanity, and in that moment, the cries of this Palm Sunday were being answered even before anyone knew Jesus' name. God answers the cries of our hearts often in ways we simply can't understand, usually in ways we fail to recognize in the moment, frequently even before we ask. And much more than that, God draws near in human suffering because that's just who God is. You may find yourself disappointed in life. You may find your expectations of yourself and others unmet. In Christ, you'll never find yourself alone or forgotten or unheard because this God has already disclosed quite a lot about God's loving and generous nature and the faithfulness of this Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. Let's pray. Gracious God, in Jesus Christ, you answer the cries of our hearts, and this has always been the case, even before the world knew what to pray or how to ask. Go with us now into the story of this week. Go with us into your story for the life of the world. Keep us awake in the witness of Thursday evening. Keep us near in the suffering of Friday afternoon. Keep us faithful and hold us together in the silence of Saturday's rest. And bring us once again, O oh God, to the unexpected and inexplicable news of Easter morning. God of mercy, you hear the cries of our hearts as we pray for friends in need, as we pray for complete strangers, as we pray for the saints among us, and a whole company of sinners too. Draw us to yourself, living God. Heal what is yours. And do a new thing again within us, through us, for us. All of this and whatever else you see that we need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, we have another distanced choir production. Uh, we couldn't celebrate this day without this hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
Bethlehem, the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's share signs of that peace with one another. Peace. Peace, William. Peace, Jeff. The peace of Christ be with you, Bob and Julie, Myrna and Marcia. The peace of Christ be with you, Sandy and Larry. Calvin and Joan from Arizona. The peace of Christ be with you, Cleverly family. Maddie and Tim and Bruce. The peace of Christ be with you, Lisa and Scott. And Joan's family. We have at least 86 with us here, in addition to those who are in the sanctuary. Friends, good morning. Gathered into one by God's living spirit. Let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bethlehem, let us know if you have any special prayer requests this week. Myrna is on the men, and Marcia and Elaine are keeping close tabs there. Steph from New York has been in town to visit our friend Lucy, so she's checking on Lucy um, this week. And yesterday, uh, Bethlehem welcomed the Akala family here in this sanctuary uh, for the funeral of Don Akala. He died a year ago, more than a year ago. And so the family has been waiting in this time of, of distance to have that service, and so they finally came home yesterday. Uh, if only for this, uh, this brief reunion. Uh, it, was, it was a meaningful service yesterday among family. And now Holy Week begins. Join us Thursday evening on this YouTube channel or in person at 7 p.m. And on Friday, watch for a reading of the Passion Story again on this channel as well as a special selection from William. Is that right? Uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> Piano and clarinet? Yes. Mixed? Yes. So that's on Friday, and also on Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, join us at Slater Sheldahl United Methodist Church. We'll be going there to participate in that service. It is a community service that these congregations have uh, jointly hosted in years past, last year, that was not possible. This year it is. So it will be a tenebrae service, a, a Good Friday service, uh, at 7 p.m. at Slater Sheldahl UMC. Finally, again, at 9 o'clock here, either in person or on this YouTube channel, uh, join us for Easter worship next Sunday. Join us at 10 o'clock for a brief curbside communion service as well. As I explained to the folks gathered in person this morning, we stayed in the lane of Palm Sunday today. Join us again Thursday and Friday for the rest of the story. This is the biggest story the church has to share. You're invited to dive in with all of us this week. Our Sunday school team has planned an Easter egg hunt here on the church's East Lawn, not next week, but the following week. Easter is a seven-week celebration in the life of the church. So on the second week of Easter, April 11th, they'll host that Easter egg hunt. And because it's mid-April, maybe we'll have a good shot at some nice spring weather. Also on that Sunday, we'll hear a word from the Bishop of the Southeastern Iowa Synod uh, as she preaches and uh, supplies the pastors of the Southeastern Iowa Synod a little break after a holy week uh, in a pandemic after a derecho. So we're kind of looking forward uh, to hearing from Bishop Current um, the second week of Easter. I'll still host, but she'll, she'll preach for us. 
Now, uh, for that Easter egg hunt, kids expect games and snacks and uh, sidewalk chalk and, and, and all the things. Uh, so, so definitely look forward to that. Our family stream is next. We have another new family stream this morning. They're back. Uh, we'll be right back after a short break. Bethlehem, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Friends, go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you.